Welcome grade 10 math. Today we are starting chapter 5 entitled Quadratic Expressions. Um, we're going to be doing section 5.1 which is multiplying polynomials. In this chapter we're going to be um, working with transitioning between the different forms of quadratics. Okay. In chapter 4 we learned about quadratics in vertex form, factored form, and standard form. In this chapter we're going to learn the skills necessary in order to transition between those three. Okay, so we're going to be able to express quadratics in all three of those. We're going to learn the skills um, if we're given a quadratic in standard form. We're going to learn how to express that in factored form and even in vertex form. And then also if we're given a quadratic in factored form, we can put that into standard form. Okay, before we get into that too much, let's first just get this skill of multiplying polynomials down. Okay, so our objective for today is to be able to use the FOIL method to multiply polynomials. Okay? We'll get to what that FOIL method is in one second. Before we do that, let's just review what the distributive property is. Okay? So, if I, want, if I gave you this expression 5 times x minus 7, and I wanted you to expand and simplify that, we learned in grade 9 that we just have to expand that 5 into the brackets. Okay, so we have to multiply that 5 by both terms inside the brackets. So this would become 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. Okay, for this one, once again, move the 3x into the brackets by multiplying it by each term in the brackets. So this will give us 3x times 4x would give us 12x squared. Okay. 3 times 4 is 12. x times x is x squared, so that gives us 12x squared. 3x times negative 5 gives us negative 15x. Our last example for distributive property, this time we have a trinomial inside the brackets, but that's alright, just apply the 2 to each of the three terms. Just like that. So this will give us 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. Okay, so this is the expanded form okay, of all of these factors. Good. So we remember distributive property. Distributive property, the number in front applies to every term in the brackets. Okay, so this negative 5 is applied to the x and the negative 7 uh, gives negative 5x plus 35. Okay, but what happens when there's more than just one number or variable in front of the bracket? Okay, in front of this x plus 2 we now have an x plus 1. Okay, it's no longer a monomial in front of the brackets. This is a binomial. Okay, so how do we multiply these polynomials. Okay, how do we do x plus one times x plus two? First of all, review what a polynomial is. A polynomial is an algebraic expression formed by adding or subtracting terms. Okay, so x plus one is a polynomial. It's an expression with an addition sign between two terms. Therefore, it's a polynomial. X plus two is also a polynomial. It's an x and a two separated by an addition sign. Okay, how do we multiply these polynomials? And there's actually a nice acronym we can use that will help us do that. It's the FOIL method. Okay. So obviously we're not talking about this kind of FOIL. But we, what we are talking about is, is a method for expanding binomials. Okay. You can find the product of two binomials by multiplying each term in the first binomial by each term in the second binomial. Then simplify by collecting like terms. Okay. So we need to multiply each term in here, the x and the 2, by each of the terms in here, the x and the 5. So there's a nice method for doing this that will help us organize our, our process. So we have to multiply the x by the x and the 5. So we can multiply it by the x by the x. Okay. So we're multiplying the first term in the first bracket by the first term in the second bracket. So the f stands for first. Okay. x times x is x squared. Okay. Next, 
We also need to multiply the x by the 5. Okay. So next, we're going to multiply the first term in the first bracket by the second term in the second bracket. Another way of looking at it is we're multiplying the outside terms, okay? The two terms on the very outside of these of this question here, okay? The x is on the very left outside, the 5 is on the very right outside. Okay, so we're multiplying the outside terms. Okay, x times 5 gives us a positive 5x. Good. Next, okay, so the first term and the first um, factor has been multiplied by each of the terms in the second factor. Okay? Or, sorry, I should say the x in the first binomial has been multiplied by each of the terms in the second binomial. Okay? Now, we need to multiply the second term in the first binomial by both terms in the second binomial. So we'll do the 2 times the x first. Okay? So these are the inside terms. If x and 5 are on the outside of these binomials, 2 and x are on the inside. Two times x is a positive two x. Okay. Now this two hasn't been multiplied by that five yet. Okay. And each term in, in each binomial has to be multiplied by each term in the other binomial. Okay. So we still have to mul multiply this two by that five. Let's get a blue here. Okay. So this two has to be multiplied by the five. Good. So these are the last terms of each binomial. Okay? If we look at each binomial, 2 is the last term of the first one, 5 is the last term of the second one. Okay? 2 times 5 gives us a positive 10. Okay? So what we've done so far is we've multiplied each term in the first binomial, okay? the x and the 2, by each term in the second binomial. So the x was multiplied by the x and the 5, and the 2 is multiplied by the x and the 5 as well. Okay? So we've done everything we need to do for this method, except for then simplifying by collecting like terms. So all we have to do now is collect whatever like terms are in this expression here. So let's see if we can find some like terms. Remember, like terms are terms with the same variable raised to the same exponent. Okay? There's only one variable that has, there's only one term that is an x squared. Okay. There's two terms here that both have an x. Remember, these x's are raised to the power of 1 if you don't see an exponent. Okay. So those are like terms. They both have an x to the 1. And there's only one constant term. Okay. So the only terms we can collect here, the only like terms, are 5x and 2x. So if we collect those like terms, our resulting quadratic expression is x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay, so there will be our answer to this question here. So just to review what we did here, we found the product of two binomials, okay, by multiplying each term in the first binomial, the x and the 2, by each of the terms in the second binomial. And how we did this was using the FOIL method. Multiplied the first terms, then the outside terms, then the inside terms, then the last terms, and then simplified by collecting like terms. Good. Okay. So example one, we just did that one. Let's just do it again quickly, okay? So we have x plus 2 times x plus 5. To multiply binomials, multiply the first terms. So x is the first term in both of them. x times x is x squared. Then multiply the outside terms, the x and the 5. That gives us 5x. Then multiply the inside terms the 2 and the x, and then the last terms, 2 and the 5. That gives us positive 10. Collect like terms. 5x and 2x are the only like terms. They're the only terms with the same variable to the same exponent. Okay. So we have x squared plus 7x plus 10. Good. Let's try another example. Let's simplify x minus 2 times x plus 4. Okay, so I'll just rewrite it larger here. x minus 2 times x plus 4. Good. So all we have to do here, use the FOIL method, so multiply the first terms, 
x times x is x squared. Good. Then multiply the outside terms. x times 4 gives us 4x. Now the inside terms, make sure to look at the sign. Okay, so we have a negative 2 times an x. That will give us negative 2x. And then the last terms. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Collect our like terms. Once again, the only like terms are the ones with the variable of x. Okay, so 4x and negative 2x are our like terms. We can collect those. Once we do, we get x squared plus 2x minus 8. Okay, 4x minus 2x is 2x. Good, there's that one. Let's try another one. Simplify 3x plus 7 times x minus 5. Okay, use the FOIL method. Multiply the first terms in each binomial. 3x times x. We have to remember our exponent laws is 3x squared. Okay. We're multiplying exponents. We're multiplying variables, you just add the exponents, okay? So we have an x to the 1 times an x to the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay? So 3x times x gives us 3x squared. Then multiply the outside terms. 3x times negative 5 gives us negative 15x. Then multiply the inside terms. 7 times x gives us 7x. And then multiply the last terms. 7 times negative 5 is negative 35. Collect our like terms. Our like terms in this case are negative 15x and positive 7x. When we collect those, we end up with 3x squared minus 8x minus 35. Okay? Good. Number four, once again, FOIL method again. Give this one a shot on your own. Okay, just pause the video and try this one. And once you've got your answer, just resume it and make sure you get the same answer. Okay? So, once again, FOIL method, first terms. Negative 2x times 3 gives us negative 6x. Then our outside terms, negative 2x times negative 4x. A negative times a negative will give us a positive. And then negative 2x times negative 4x is positive 8x squared. Good. And then the inside terms, 5 times 3 is 15. And then the last terms, 5 times negative 4x is negative 20x. So now we can look for our like terms. Okay, negative 6x and negative 20x. Those are two terms that have the same variable to the same exponent, so those are like terms. We can collect those. When we write our final answer, we always want to start with the term that has um, the variable to the, to the highest degree exponent first. Okay, so we're going to put 8x squared first. Then we're going to put negative 6x minus 20x. When we collect that, that gives us negative 26x. And then we'll put our constant last. Our constant is 15. Good. Next example. Once again, try this one on your own again right now. So just pause it. Okay. So when we do FOIL first terms, I'll do this one kind of quickly. That gives us 12x squared. Then our outside terms, 4x times negative 2 will give us minus 8x. Inside terms, negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. And then the last terms, negative 1 times negative 2, negative times a negative is a positive. Collect our like terms of negative x and negative 3x. We'll get 12x squared minus 11x plus 2. Good. Hopefully you got that answer.